Hey, it is great to have you join me today. You know, we're going to, to look at God's word. We're gonna, I, I'm gonna give you some information that I believe that God has placed upon my heart. I wanna share these words with you. You know, I'm gonna ask you a question. How many of you would agree with me that we are in the midst of a war right now? We are in the midst of an intense battle. You know, I know we, we live in some, some uh, exciting times, but at the same time, they're, they're kind of terrifying, or, or I guess we, we would describe it as perilous times. But I want to show you in the Word of God exactly how you and I are supposed to respond to all this, this insane uh, uh, mess that is happening around us. And we're going to look in Joel chapter 2 today, verses 7 through 11. So I hope you have your, your Bibles with you. I believe Joel has a parallel to where we're at today. So this speaks to us prophetically. Now I'm going to begin reading in verses 7, and we're going to read on through verse 11. They run like mighty men. They climb the wall like men of war. Everyone marches in formation, and they do not break ranks. They do not push one another. Everyone marches in his own column. Though they lunge between the weapons, they are not cut down. They run to and fro in the city. They run on the wall. They climb into the houses. They enter at the windows like a thief. The earth quakes before them. The heavens tremble. The sun and the moon grow dark, and the stars diminish their brightness. The Lord gives voice before his army, for his camp is very great. For strong is the one who executes his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. Who can endure it? Now, after reading that passage of Scripture, we, we see a description of, uh, of the mighty army of God. And I'm going to ask you, does the army that, uh, that we as Christians portray today have any comparison to this? Does the devil look at us and consider us to be an invading force and something to fear, or does he look at us and just laugh? You know, the enemy should quake and tremble when you, as a believer, use the name of Jesus Christ. Because when God's army, made up of you and me, invades, we win. Now, in order to be part of this invading force, we have to change our attitude toward God. We've got to line up our thinking with God's thinking. You know, we have a, we have a great dividing line uh, being drawn by the Spirit of God in this day. On one side, you see those who are, who are going forward, who have great faith, who who believe that God is going to answer them when they ask. And on the other side, we have a group that I, I guess I would like to call nominal Christianity. They, 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 they may go along with some of the things, but they're not really moving forward with the Lord. An invading army, in order for it to, to, to be powerful, it must follow its leader and not just follow its own whims and passions and do whatever you feel like doing. An invading army is always advancing. It is not sitting around twiddling its thumbs. I want to be on the side of those who are going on strongly with God. Now, if we, go, if, if we choose to count ourselves as being on the side of God, then I'm telling you, we've got to get really vocal 
with our beliefs. We've got to rock the boat of religion and we've got to state what we believe in and then we've got to stand by it. You know, you may have people uh, withdraw from you that may push you away and say, you know what, you're crazy, you're a fanatic, you know, you're in error, but you need to do what God tells you to do. Let everyone else be responsible for their own reactions and their responses. Don't you dare suffer any sleepless nights about what God has told you to do or what you know to be the truth that is within his word. Let those who don't like you or, or don't believe in what the word says, let them have the sleepless nights. If you have a vision or a dream from God that you've not yet seen fulfilled, it is time for you to start exercising your faith for what God has promised you. Don't let other people hold you back. Keep marching and keep running because this is exactly what God wants us to do in this day and hour. The army that is described by Joel cannot be stopped and the soldiers have no fear. When people hear them and see them, it says that they tremble in fear because this army is such a powerful force to be reckoned with. If you want to be part of such a force, then you've got to let go of the things that have held you back and have bound you up for all of these years. You've got to loose yourselves from the words that hold you back. And I know they may sound like they're religious words, but they really have nothing to do with God. You need to be quick and to obey the call of God in your life. You know, Peter made a comment. He said, we ought to obey God rather than men. So when God says move, we don't discuss it. We move. When God says jump, then we jump. Too many believers want to have, you know, you know they want to have a discussion. They want to vote about it. Don't do that. When God says get up and go, then we get up and we go. Don't ask questions. Just go. God is not going to use people who are too busy asking questions, who would rather sit back and ponder whether or not they really heard from God or not. He wants to use people that are established in the Word and in the Holy Spirit. God uses people who hear, trust, and obey. You know, you look at, look at Abraham. You know, he, he's our father, Father Abraham. You know, says we're part of his lineage. God told Abraham, he said, Abraham, get up from this country and go over there. Abraham didn't even know where there was, but he got up and he left that, that, that land in which he had grown incredibly wealthy and prosperous in. He left it. He didn't just sit around. He didn't ask other people, hey, what do you think about what God's telling me to do? It says Abraham just gathered up everything, gathered up his family, and just left for there. See, that's what you and I need to do when we hear from God. Don't let anything hold you back. Don't let religious people tie you down and hold you back from flowing with God's Spirit. Now, the reason why you know, so many Christian movements start in the power of God and then collapse is because they try to take the, the Spirit of God and cram it into a box. You see, we want, we want God, we want the Holy Spirit to be so organized that, that He fits within our schedule, that He follows our agenda. Now, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with organization because the Bible says that we must do everything decently and in order. But we also need to know that we have to be flexible enough to flow with the Spirit of God. You never tell the Holy Spirit what to do. He tells us what to do. 
Now, I want you to understand that we live in a critical, crucial point in time. You know, I, I literally feel like time is closing in on us. And the last voice heard must be the voice of God to the lost in this world. This is not a time, you know, honestly, it's not a time to have a bunch of super or spiritual superstars. Local Christians, local churches, large and small, will be used in this, this mighty move of God's Spirit. This is not the time for us to be satisfied. This is not the time for us to be fearful. I can tell you, this is not the time for us to be closing the doors of our churches. Uh, our, our local uh, Wichita, one of our local Wichita news channels this morning reported that two of the, of the large mainstream denominational movements in the state of Kansas that their leaders were recommending that they close the doors of their churches once again. Man, this is not the time for us to shut everything down. This is not the time for us to be satisfied and just say, oh, well, there's nothing I can do. Always look for new horizons. Always keep invading. Yes, even in the type of environment that we find ourselves in today. Do not let the enemy stand in your way. It is time for us as Christians to cause the devil to shake, tremble, and fear. Do not fear what other people may say to you. Do not fear what other Christians may say to you. Let them fear you. So here's a big question. How do we get the enemy to fear us? By invading the spirit realm. That's how we do it. There is a realm in the spirit where you can walk, talk, and live. And, and, and I've, I've taught on this for months. By the sovereignty of God, we are able to tap into the spiritual realm. And I know in most of our churches, in most of our Christian life, you know, may, we, we may have seen that every once in a while, we may have experienced the glory of God every once in a while, but see, not many people want to do what it takes to live, to literally live in the spiritual realm. You see, Satan, that's where Satan operates also. And Satan does not want people to invade his demonic world. He, prev he, he prefers to invade our world instead. He always wants us to, to be on the, on, on the uh, defensive. But it's time for us to be on the offensive. We need to invade Satan's territory. We need to put fear in his heart. You know what happens? When you invade, it causes faith to grow in your heart. It causes the power of the Holy Spirit to come into you. And it tells God that you are ready to move on with him. Now, honestly, I don't have much patience with people who, who are always just sitting there waiting on, I guess, waiting on God to reveal himself to them. What are you talking about? Just do something. You can talk to people at work or on the street. You can talk to them about the, about the, the wonderful kingdom of God. Don't sit around and wait for some incredible vision to come on you. Don't wait for somebody to come up to you and, and prophesy over you. If God tells you to do something, then do it. Keep the fire burning in your heart. Continue to seek new heights. Don't retreat. Attack. Always be the aggressor. Hear me, Christians, always go forward. Always be a part of God's great army. See, that aggressive attitude is what Joel was prophesying about here in chapter two. He said that there was going to arise young men and women and old men and old women 
who would move in the power of the Holy Spirit under the anointing hand of God. And these men and women of God will not be defending the city. They will not be defending their church. No, they will be invading the city, barricading ourselves, hear me, barricading ourselves inside a church building may make you feel all warm and fuzzy. It may make you feel like you're in your safe place, but we need to be out there where real life is happening. We have a work to do for the kingdom of God. You know, many Christians, they don't know what it is. They don't know what it's like to be in a spiritual battle. They don't know what it's like to attack the forces of the devil. They only know what it's like to sit there in their pews week after week and defend their faith. Defending is not fun. Attacking is fun. When we learn to attack, we learn one of the joys of being a Christian. If we're always defending, life gets tough. If I'm always on the defense, life gets very difficult. I get tired. I want to quit. I want to give up. I want to, I want to move away and go someplace else. You know, the great preachers of the past were always attacking. They were always invading the devil's kingdom. Now, you know, in sporting events, you can't win without a good offense. You can have the best defense in the world, but if you don't have anybody that can run the ball down the field and score, or you don't have anybody that can put the ball in the basket, you're never going to win. To win, you've got to learn spiritual strategy, strategies to use in surprise attacks against the enemy. You've got to learn to go to the throne of God. You've got to learn how God operates in the realm of the spirit. And you've got to learn how to flow and work with the angels of God. Now, <clears throat> I'm not talking about something that's imaginary, okay? I'm not making this up. I'm talking about a realm that is very real. And it is in and around us today. But the sad part is, Many Christians don't even know about this realm. They have no, they, they don't know how to get into that realm of the spirit. And sadly, they don't even have an interest in getting into it. Now, whether you understand spiritual warfare or not, don't dare speak out against those who are in that invading force because God protects those who are obedient to him. And believe me, in this day and hand, day and time, God's hand is going to protect his people. When you win a victory in the spirit world, you will have a victory in the natural world. We've got to learn how to walk in faith, my friends. If we're going to be part of God's invading army, we've got to learn how to walk in faith. You can hear, uh, you know, you can hear all kinds of faith formulas. You can hear other good teachings on faith, but I'm telling you, there is another realm of faith that no preacher can define for, for you. That realm of faith has to be experienced, and you and I have to learn to walk in it. You know, people, pe people can ask, well, how do you do such things? You know, where is that? You know, where is that place? You know, can you tell us about it? You know, and honestly, you know, I really can't. All I can say is I know that it is there, but you have to get in it and you have to live in it to know what it's like. I am only here to help you build a foundation and I am trying to impart to you and me the fire, the zeal, the strength, the knowledge so that we can rise up and invade the powers of darkness that are in this world and control them with God's spirit. And that is what God has called us to do. God wants us to control the money 
of your city. God wants us to rule the political systems of our cities. God wants us to rule in every area of our lives. And if you begin to invade the realm of the spirit, that spiritual dimension, wherever you, wherever you may lay, live, you are going to find that you come against principalities and powers. And principalities and powers are some of the most powerful forces of darkness that are working in the earth today. They are not just lesser demons. The principalities and darkness, I guarantee you, this is what we see working right now in, in, in the political arena that we are seeing in our nation right now. Those are, those are uh, principalities and darkness, principalities and powers of darkness that are attacking those that would, would be righteous, those that would stand for life and for righteousness. See, principalities and powers are very strong and they're smart. But I want you to understand that God is bigger and God is smarter. In this day which we live in, these people, the earth, they must know where we stand. The devil must know where we stand and who we are and that we have the power of God because the day is coming. Mark my words, the day is coming when the prince of powers of darkness is going to stand on one, one side of the stage and God's people are going to stand on the other side. And we better know, oh yes, we better know that we have power through our creator. We better know that when we speak, God is going to move. The powers of darkness are going to be able to perform signs and wonders. They are going to be able to do unusual things. And so we need to have the power of God, literally, to be able to control them. We've got to have a force. And yeah, I say, the force is with us. And the force that I'm talking about is the Holy Spirit. And that force is an unlimited power. Most Christians today, just like Samson, they know the limits of their power. But we've got to get to a place where we know no limits. And we know that all power has been given to us. You see, this power is available. And we can walk in the realm of the Spirit right now. But many churches, many Christians, see that, that nominal group, they, they don't know how to achieve that power. They don't know how to get into that to that realm of power. The sad thing is, is a lot of them don't even care to have it. There's nothing wrong, you know, with sermons that, 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 that give us steps to success or how to live a good life. But you cannot go step one, step two, step three to get to the place that I'm talking about. See, it's different. And it's different for every person. Every one of us are at different maturity levels in our spiritual walk. Every responsibility is different. But whatever it costs, whatever it takes, it's worth it. Give up everything and seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then it says all these other things will be given to you. See, we're coming into a critical time in the realm of the spirit and in this world. We could see the second return of Jesus Christ. And I guarantee you, whenever he does return, he needs to see us, see that we are busy invading. We've got to let the earth know right now that there is a God and he is alive and well. And the only way that is going to happen is when enough Christians stand up and make a declaration and say, I know that my God reigns and my God has control over this world and my God 
has control over my government. See this? Bam! There's a miracle. Bam! There's another miracle. We need the power of God flowing through our lives. Power is what we need. Not talk. Not dialogue. Power. And the power of God is available to every believer. God has no favorites. You know that? God has no favorites. And the power of God is available to all of us. The only reason why, you know, we have these, these superstars in Christianity today is because so few people are willing to pay the price to get to that point. What God gave to some people in the Bible and down through history is available to us today if we'll just pay the price. The great believers that are, that are, that are in the Bible, the great believers that have, that, that, that have lived in past centuries, past years, got to that place because they were invaders. They had the Spirit of God inside of them. They felt the power. They moved in the power. They knew how to work with angels. And they surrounded themselves with people who had that same spirit of invading. God's power is not going to come to a person who is playing games and just doing what, whatever he wants to do. His power is going to come to people that are walking according to his laws. Now, I know, I know there's a lot of people out there who would say, well, you know, God, Jesus fulfilled the law. Well, yeah, I know, maybe, maybe he fulfilled the law of the, of, of the Old Testament. But I'm going to tell you something, that the New Testament, you can't just throw out the Old, because the New Testament has laws and regulations as well as the Old Testament did. You know, you hear a lot of people say, well, you know, we're under, we're under an age of grace now. That, that means I can, do, I, I can do whatever I want. You know, I, I, I can redefine things. I can, I can throw out what God says about uh, creating male and female or, or throw out things about, about the shedding of innocent bloods, like blood, like the, like the blood of, 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 of babies. You know, I can throw out God's definition of marriage. You know, I can throw out, you know, that there's more than, you know, that, that there's only two genders, male and female. I can toss all that out because I live under an age of grace. Oh, man, that's not true. And if you, if you accept that lie, if you believe that lie, it will take you down a road, I guarantee you, that you will not find to be very pleasant. We need to understand something today, that God's judgment upon sin is also part of his love and grace toward us. God gave us a belief system, a value system, a system of morality that he expects us to live by. And he did not add, hey, these things are optional if you don't agree with it or if it offends you. No. He said, this is the way that you live, so do it. And so we have a lot of people today, a lot of church organizations today that don't want to do what God says. They want to redefine everything. They want to say that that word doesn't apply to us in the 21st century. They want to play games. They want to do what they do, do what they want to do. And I'm going to tell you right now, they will reap the reward for what they do. To be part of God's army in these troubling days, you've got to walk and obey his laws and his rules without question. You've got to walk in them with all power and all of your might. That doesn't take great faith, okay? That does not take great faith. You can have a tiny, small amount of faith. We all have a measure of faith. Jesus said if you had a, had a mustard seed of faith, which is tiny, tiny, you could move a mountain. So see, it doesn't take a lot of faith. You add hope to it, you direct it to the throne of God, and he will take that tiny amount of faith that you and I have, and he'll use it to our benefit. Now, you know, we have a lot of Christians and we have a lot of church organizations that are trying to achieve things through their own strength. You know, they want to be uh, the gold and the silver vessels 
when God's not looking for gold and silver in this day, he's simply looking for yielded vessels. And that's what you and I have to be. You don't need a college education to serve God. You don't need to, need to have gone to seminary to serve God. You don't need to be wealthy to serve God. Others may try to point a finger at you and say you're not worthy or that you're not good enough or you're not as good as them, but, but don't you be discouraged. Don't you dare be, be, be discouraged. I'm telling you, God is not looking at those things. He is looking for yieldedness, the obedience of your heart. And if you can simply live in a state of being yielded to God, to yielded to the Holy Spirit, you can accomplish great things for the kingdom. Now, though this battlefield is on the spiritual, moral, and social battlefields, laws do still matter. And therefore, these are being fought on the political field of battle as well. Though physical conflict has always been part of these issues. And we can expect this, this conflict to increase as these days unfold in front of us. The real battlefield is much more spiritual. It's much more spiritual than it is physical, moral, social, or political. You've got to keep that in mind. Yes, I can, I can give my opinion regarding, you know, physical, moral, social, political issues. But the spiritual realm is the most important. For this reason, regardless of how much the physical battles increase, we've got to understand that spiritual warriors are the, most, are the most important people in this unfolding conflict that is in front of us. We can win every physical battle, even the entire war, but end up in a much worse place as a country full of even more corruption, evil, and wickedness than we have right now if the spiritual battle is not won. That's why, my friends, I want you to focus on that. Every major issue that is in front of us right now, it is a battle line. It has been drawn. It can be won physically and politically, even in, in a very dominant way. But in a short time, America will be right back to the same level of spiritual, moral, and political corruption if we don't have another great awakening that transforms the hearts and the minds of people. And, and, and we see this example repeatedly in Scripture as some of the greatest moves of God in Israel's history did not have fruit that lasted very long. In fact, they found themselves continually back in captivity. As the battles in these days become more physical and actually in our face, we need to understand that the real battle is fought in the spiritual realm. If hordes of those with evil intent start to threaten our families, our communities, our neighbors, who we are commanded to love, of course we must be willing to join in their physical defense. I want you to keep in mind, though, that as King David was, was perhaps the greatest worshiper in Scripture, he was also the greatest warrior. You know, we know that God is love, but we also see and we also need to realize that his judgment and his vengeance is going to come upon the wicked. That is not a contradiction. That is not a conflict. His judgments and his vengeance comes because he loves us. 
Those, those of you that have come up through the uh, emerging generations whose mentality has been shaped into, into dualistic thinking by the indoctrination that the public education system in America has become, you have a veil over your eyes. And that veil is keeping you from seeing the kindness and the severity of God at the same time. You can only see in, in extremes and you can't hear anything that upsets you because it interferes with your presumed safety of your safe places. We, we need special wisdom right now. We need anointing from God to break through this. But for now, we must not allow this type of mentality to control us or to lead us. The same God who loves all men and desires for them to be saved came the first time as a lamb, but he will return as a lion. Don't you ever forget the lamb and the lion, both of those are his nature. And we must understand and we must know both. We see in the Bible prophecies right through to the book of Revelation that he is coming back with vengeance against the evil, with a rod of iron to rule the nations that opposed him. Man, I want to be on the right side, don't you? I want to be on the right side. And if we are in unity with him, we will be both great worshipers and also great warriors, as is the nature of the son of David. My friends, I'm going to tell you once again, we are in a time of war. And so it's not time for you to sit back in your easy chair, prop your feet up, and watch the evening news. Shut it off. Shut that negative influence because I'm telling you right now, that stuff that you're reading and seeing out there is nothing but a demonic influence that is flooding your mind, flooding your hearts with fear. Shut it off. Seek God. Let his power come down upon you. Walk as a mighty warrior of God, join with us. You know, I may not be able to stand next to you in your home right now, but I want you to join with me as a mighty warrior of God, and we are going to kick the devil's butt. We are going to pull down principalities and powers and put them under our feet where they belong. I'm not going to settle for the evil wickedness and corruption that is happening in our world today. No, I'm going to rise up in the power of God and we're going to make declarations to the angels and the angels of God are going to come on the scene and bring victory. That's the God that I serve, not a wimpy God, not a God that I don't feel. I serve a mighty God. And so do you. My friends, right now, take up these words. I'm going to declare them upon you. I, I speak, Lord Jesus, right now upon everyone that is watching this broadcast, that you would allow the Spirit of God to go into their spirit right now. Let them feel the power of God rising up inside of them. Let the fear leave. Let the anxiety leave. Let the depression leave and let your power rise up in them. God, we may not know everything we can do, but I can open my mouth and I can make declarations to the heaven. And in the mighty name of Jesus, I declare right now that the evil, corruption, and wickedness that is unfolding in my nation, my nation, be brought down. That you would, that you would cause every wicked and evil device to, to be shown in its fullness, that it would be openly, openly trampled upon and put out. And I ask it in the 
powerful name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord God. My friends, you walk in power. You stand in the power of the Holy Spirit. And let's see incredible things happen for the power and with the power of God. God bless you and have an incredible week. Walk in power.